Hello, welcome back to Catholic Reboot. This is episode five. I'm going to do a series of uh, episodes around the Blessed Mother, one of my most favorite topics. Uh, as Catholics, uh, we have great devotions to the Blessed Mother, but I want to start by eliminating some of the misconception around that. So first, we as Catholics do not place the Blessed Mother above the Trinity. Uh, and as part of that, we do not place her above Jesus. However, we do see her role in our lives uh, and in the life of Christ as very important. And why is that? Because we view Mary as the intercessor, right? So she intercedes to us, intercedes for us to Christ much like uh, the way we view the saints and the angels. We, uh, we look for an intercessor for Christ, right? A lot of non-denominationals uh, who were probably uh, former Catholics, they have a real problem with this because they don't feel there needs to be any uh, anything that comes between us and Christ. We go directly through Christ and all we really need to know is what the scripture says and our own personal relationship with Christ begins through the Holy Spirit. Uh, we as Catholics do not believe that. I'm gonna be very dogmatic about that is a clear departure from our faith. Uh, and why is that? Because as Catholics, we don't view our faith as our personal relationship. Christ. We are a community, and you'll hear it in our creed as well, the Apostle's Creed, of believers, and we don't pick and choose what it is that the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us through Scripture, right? Otherwise, the way we look at that is then our belief, because it's this personal relationship, dies with us on our death. You can't move it forward because everything is individually based. And again, why we don't believe that is because we understand Christ and his church as being one truth, not a series of individually inspired truths to all the individuals. Again, it, there is no continuity in the faith. But I'm departing a little bit. I want to get back to why it is that we, we look to the Blessed Mother the way we do. But in so doing... Uh, I want to uh, bring up a discussion with a friend who had said, you know, when I when I was a Catholic and I looked at the rosary, right, which is clearly uh, a Marian devotion, right? Um, by the way, I'm going to pause for a second and let everyone know that the rosary is what we call the rubric, not a sacrament. Uh, it is a rubric of our faith, right? It, it leads us to, to Christ. Um, so uh, she had said, you know, the, when I used to say the rosary, I felt like I was cheating on Jesus because the rosary says more Hail Marys than our fathers or glory be to the Father. Right? I don't understand why you would give more emphasis to Mary. And the Bible teaches me that we have one mediator, and, and they and usually the reference is to, uh, to scripture that Jesus did not teach that I must come through his mother Mary. Uh, you know, I know that Jesus came to us through the Virgin Mary from God the Father, but help me understand why, as a former Catholic, I should go through Mary instead of directly through Jesus himself. Um, I think the, the part of the problem, and, and I don't mean to be cruel when I say this, is when I hear that from former Catholics, uh, I generally will respond, have you really learned your catechism? Um, did you do the deep dive into your Catholic faith as you are now in the Bible? Because the, the misunderstanding of the purpose of the rosary and the formation of the rosary uh, 
is very important. So yes, there are more Hail Marys in the Rosary than there are Fathers in the Glory Bees. And mostly because what we are doing with the Blessed Mother is we're, we're walking with her through a series of prayers. And if you know the, the different uh, mysteries and the decades of the Rosary, you know that there's the joyful mysteries, there's the sorrowful mysteries, and then there's the glorious mysteries. This is really a beautiful way of pulling scripture into the prayer. Because the, the scripture tells us that Our Lady pondered the events of Christ's life. Right? So you'll see that in, in Luke 2.19. Our Catholic tradition also tells us that she sees the one who created the, the actual stations of the cross, right? So it's a devotion that allows us to spiritually accompany Christ through his passion and death and resurrection. So both the rosary and the stations of the cross are these beautiful scriptural references to the life of Christ. So similarly, the rosary guides us to pray and meditate, right? So when we're saying Hail Mary and when we're saying Holy Mary, what we're actually doing when we're praying the rosary is we're meditating on the mystery itself. So, uh, for example, uh, the first mystery in the, the sorrowful mystery is agony in the garden. What we're doing as we're saying the Hail Mary and Holy Marys is we're meditating on what Christ was going through in the garden. That's where our mind is supposed to be. Okay, so that's what the rosary does. It guides us to pray and meditate and ponder on the mysteries of the incarnation in our hearts. And we're asking the Blessed Mother to pray for us as we imitate her pondering on the prayer, right? Um, you'll also notice that uh, that when we do our litanies, if we do a litany to the Blessed Mother, we'll say, pray for us. Well, if we do a litany to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, what do we say? Have mercy on us. See the difference there? So, with the Blessed Mother, we're saying, because of your status, because of your incarnation, please pray for us, right? So further, uh, we, we fulfill scriptural prophecy whenever we pray the Hail Mary. Uh, because the Hail Mary, and many Catholics may not know this, uh, many non-Catholics are fallen away Catholics when they do the deep dive into scripture, like to jump over this one. But when Mary uh, visited her cousin Elizabeth, her cousin Elizabeth was the one that uh, said to her, "Blessed are thou, the, uh, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, right? Blessed is the fruit of thy womb." Well, we know that her cousin Elizabeth could not have known that. That had to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. Right? Um, what was Mary's response and? It's called the Magnificat. She said, Behold, from now on will all ages call me blessed. Right? I will, later on, I will give you the entire uh, Magnificat because it's beautiful. Um, but for those people that want to point to scripture, go to Luke 1 48. Behold, from now, from now on, all will call me blessed. Well, you'd have to really have a problem with that feeling like you're favoring the Blessed Mother, but this is in the scripture. So we quote scripture in the first half of the prayer, is what we're actually doing when we're saying the rosary. And ask Mary to pray for us in the second half of the prayer. Uh, being very specific to the rosary right now, in response to the question of eating on Christ, Mary's name so much. So how are we fulfilling scripture in the first half? We are basically fulfilling the inner interaction with cousin Elizabeth. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among all women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. How are we fulfilling the second half of the prayer? 
that would be uh, Luke 128. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Okay. All right. Now, when when the question is, why must I go through Mary to obtain my salvation through Jesus? The the simple answer is that you you must go through Jesus to obtain your salvation. That we know, which means that you will go through his mystical body, or the mystical body of Christ, which is what? The church. Right? So, if you, again, you want to point to scripture, it would be Roman 12, 4 through 12, uh, 12, 4 through 5, and uh, Corinthians 12, 12 through 27. And again, I'll put these all in a separate file. You cannot separate Jesus, the head of the church, from the members of the body. So to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and this is this is what a lot of non-denominationals and born-again Christians will say, you know, um, I I need to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Well, to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior is to accept the members of the body as your brothers and sisters as well. And to accept the Blessed Virgin Mary as your mother. And you can see this in Revelation 12, 17. For she is the mother of Jesus, the head. And what mother would refuse to pray for her children in need? I mean, if you really think about it, uh, why, why non-Catholics have a problem with favoring the mother? We all know we love when people love our mother. And we wouldn't say, we think you're paying too much attention to how special our mother is. Right? Um, it, it's just it's that motherly relationship to the child. So when asked that question, um, I, shouldn't I just go directly, pray directly to Jesus? Of course, you know, our salvation comes uh, from the second person, the Blessed Trinity. Jesus is God. Mary is not God, right? That's the other thing that they of is treating Mary like God, we do not. Uh, no, you don't need to preface every prayer by saying to Jesus through Mary, but we can and should ask other members of the mystical body to pray for us. Jesus is the one mediator. Other believers are members of Jesus' mystical body. So when we speak to a Christian, we are in, in, in somewhat of a mystical sense um, speaking to Jesus, you know, we share in his mission, in his overall mission of mediation uh, to the world. So the church is the mystical body. The church is also the new Israel. Jesus came as the son of David, as the king of kings in the new Israel. And the sons of David always had their mother as queen in their kingdom. So the role of the queen was the intercessor to the king on behalf of the poor of the kingdom, was our tradition. And the new and everlasting kingdom of Christ, the Blessed Mother, is our intercessor and our advocate. Okay? So we, we owe her honor because we serve Jesus and imitate him. Jesus will not disobey his own law. He honors his father and his mother, and we, we hear that in Scripture, right? Uh, indeed, um, we also, when we when we look at her as children, you, uh, she gave birth to the, to Christ, the Messiah, you know, the one who will rule all nations with an iron rod. Is it's also she's also the mother of the rest of the offspring. Those who keep God's commandment and bear witness to Jesus. And so we pray to Jesus and we ask the Blessed Virgin Mary's intercession. We try to love Mary like Jesus and to love Jesus like Mary does. Okay. So not to go too deep of a dive, but, you know, typical fundamentalist objections to the Catholic Church is that, you know, he said he had, uh, he had, he had created this, right? 
and that this church is his church and not a man-made church. You'll hear that all the time. You Catholics, you know, you're you created a man-made beliefs, and it's no no different than Babylon. Your beliefs and practice. And this, this intercession of Mary and the saints, it's a huge distraction. Well, it's not. It, it's the question of how we are asking the Blessed Mother's intercession. How we're looking for her uh, to assist us in our perfection of her. I hope I, I made that I didn't pull it. Um, now I want to talk about uh, what is it that Blessed Mother did in her life that significantly different than other, than other humans, why we look at her 